Hello, everyone. Thank you for attending in person. Um, it's great to see people's faces again, breathing. Uh, oh, I was going to say. Um, my name is uh, Willie Mays, and I'm the uh, Vice President of Regenerative Medicine, the head of the neuroscience programs, and one of the original co-founders of Athersis Incorporated 26 years ago. Um, I'm uh, really excited to be giving the corporate up date today for Athersis because we believe in the next uh, three to 15 months we're going to be transforming the way we think about medicine in the treatment of a number of different uh, acute care indications. By way of introduction, Athersis is a publicly traded biotechnology company located in Cleveland, Ohio. We also have a subsidiary just outside of Brussels in Leuven, Belgium. Uh, we have a number of different platform technologies, but today's focus is going to be on multi-stem or invimestra cell, which is our proprietary allogeneic cell therapy that we're evaluating in late-stage clinical trials. So uh, the focus of our translational research using multi-stem has really centered around what we've learned, all the science that we've done over the course of the better part of the last 20 years. We've published a lot of papers, worked with a lot of uh, academic and industry collaborators to develop a strong understanding of what these cells do. And, and along the way, we've learned uh, that there's a, a very interesting hypothesis we have uh, that's uh, inherent to these cells in the treatment of acute care industries. It's an innovative therapy. Um, it's broadly applicable to a number of different indications. But uh, when you have a hammer, everything looks like a nail, and we're really focused on the acute care uh, aspect of things. And as we prepare for success along the way, we've uh, begun to um, build up our manufacturing capabilities and our um, commercial application end user uh, devices, and I'll talk a little bit more about that in a couple of slides. We have a senior management team that has a broad experience base in pharmaceutical and life sciences, and most recently we've been hiring um, people into the supply chain and manufacturing aspect of the organization to make sure that as we prepare for success, we meet our goals for treating patients. Um, Multi-stem is a, a, a unique proprietary adherent allogeneic cell therapy. Uh, taken from bone marrow. It has a number of distinctive biological properties that uh, differentiates it from other uh, adherent bone marrow derived cell types. We, uh, as I said, we've been studying this cell product for the better part of 20 years now. We've understood a lot about what the cells do and what the cells don't do, and I'll be talking more about that in just a second. We, we, uh, know that the cells are a living medicine and depending on how and when and where you place them in the context of the body after an injury, they do different things and they respond in different ways. And we've been learning to characterize, grow, uh, and manufacture these cells uh, for the better part of uh, 17 years. So I'm gonna show you a qu couple of quick snapshots of clinical data that we're very, very excited about that uh, that I'll talk, I'll talk more about these indications again in just a couple of minutes, but this is data from our completed phase two acute ischemic stroke study called MASTERS-1, and if you look at the bars on the left-hand side, um, these are basically patients that make a complete recovery. And so I want to highlight the data on the left-hand side because uh, as we were talking to key opinion leaders and we were generating animal data and we were putting together a clinical protocol, um, most ischemic stroke trials uh, have endpoints of 90 days. And that's because the thought process is, is no, no matter how much rehabilitation you do, no, no matter what kind of therapy you get, what you are at 90 days after the onset of your stroke is what you're going to be for the rest of your life. Um, so we had seen in our animal data that keeping animals on study, the, for longer periods of time and evaluating them, we saw continued improvement in the cell-treated versus the saline-treated or placebo-treated animals. And, and so we build in, we pre-specified an exploratory endpoint of evaluating outcomes at a year. And you can see that we see roughly a 10% change in the, uh, in the number of patients who reach a, a complete functional recovery 
at day 90, but if we look at those same patients at one year, we have a statistically significant uh, outcome that is even more dramatic. Uh, and so we've done a lot of analysis and evaluation of the patients that uh, took part in this study. We know that the, the patients that received our cells, we saw a decrease in um, death and serious adverse events, life-threatening adverse events, and we got patients in and out of the hospital in the ICU faster in a statistically significant way. Same thing applied when you look at some of our ARDS data. This was our phase one, two acute respiratory distress syndrome trial that we uh, released data on a couple of years ago. And you can see that in the multi-stem treated groups, we see significant improvements in ventilator-free days. Um, in mortality, and again, we're getting people in and out of the ICU in a faster way. So these types of dramatic improvements we see in these acute care indications are what drives us. And the reason we focus on acute care is because we've been working with different collaborators in different continents, different indications, different species, uh, for the better part of, as I said, 20 years, and we've generated a lot of data all the way to the molecular level that underpins our therapeutic hypothesis for administration of these cells in, in acute care indications. And it's not surprising to most of the people that are here that one of the major things we know and have come to understand about the cells is they modulate the immune system. They don't just mo modulate, quote unquote, the immune system. They engage and interact and change the biology of a number of different cells that are all participating in the pathophysiology of the cells, or excuse me, of the organism the, of the patient after uh, the onset of the injury. And uh, the important point about this is that we've come to understand that time is important and that modulating the immune system in a subacute time frame after some of these uh, acute onset uh, injuries is critical to providing long-term benefit. So, uh, it's well known that after acute injuries, uh, you engage the peripheral immune system. And in some cases, uh, the peripheral immune system responds. Uh, inflammation is critical to the reparative process uh, after an injury. But in some cases, the pendulum swings too far and too hard, and you end up getting secondary pathophysiologies, and in some cases, uh, exacerbated secondary organ failures and off-target pathophysiology as a result of the inflammation. Uh, what we've come to understand is that giving multi-stem in an acute time frame after the onset of the uh, initial injury provides a faster resolution of the injury. So you get downward uh, trends in the pro-inflammatory processes and a more rapid upregulation of the reparative aspects of the immune system. And, and we believe that's why we can see uh, a, a rebalancing of immune function and better long-term outcomes uh, in these patients. So currently, with the, with the focus being on acute care, we have three clinical trials that are currently enrolling patients. We have a pivotal phase three trial in ischemic stroke uh, called MASTERS-2 um, that we've been granted a special protocol assessment RMAT designation and fast track based on the results of our MASTERS-1 study. We have a Macovia, which is our phase 2-3 acute respiratory distress syndrome trial um, that has also been given fast track and RMAT designation by the FDA based on the phase 1-2 mustards trial. And we're also uh, enrolling patients in our phase 2 trauma trial. And I'll talk a little bit about each of those uh, three indications here shortly. And finally, our partner in Japan, Helios, has uh, announced uh, completed enrollment in their uh, phase two, three uh, acute ischemic stroke trial. And so they've completed enrolling more than 200 patients in that trial, and we're expected to have data in the not too distant future on that. And they've released a little bit of top line data for their one bridge study, which is their acute respiratory distress syndrome trial. So all of these are soon to read out. And then just real quickly, I talked to you about preparing for success in the future. We have, over the course of the last couple of years, as a result of running a couple of clinical studies, come to, the, come to understand we need, if we're going to be successful in these, these kind of clinical indications, we need to be able to make more cells, 
uh, have more cells available to distribute, and uh, we need to have end user ability to access cells in a, in a, a faster way, a faster turnaround. So uh, we've made a lot of advances in manufacturing uh, three-dimensional cell product in bioreactors. Uh, we've also begun to um, finalize plans for Sifu, which is a se secure integrated freezer unit, and that's basically a, an ATM for cells that you put in the clinic at hospitals that will be using the cells where you can go to the screen, you can punch in a code, the cells that are kept in an ultra-cold storage part of the device warm up and uh, come, to the, come out of the device in the front and they can go right up to the patient on the... Uh, on the ward. So we need to have these devices. We need to have this type of preparing for success that I've spoken about because these are large markets. Um, roughly 800,000 people a year in the US and 2.2 million in Japan, the US, and Western Europe have a stroke every year. And uh, the type of trials we've been focusing on, the patient population in, in stroke, that's uh, about 40% of all ischemic stroke patients. Um, and, and we can see a lot of value creation based on some of the data that we've generated and uh, in, in that indication. ARDS, again, a very large indi indication worldwide, 2.2 million people, uh, roughly 200,000 a year in the U.S., and about 30 to 50 percent mortality. So if we get the kind of results in a larger trial that we saw in the MUSTARDS trial, uh, we're really going to be improving and changing the, the life of a lot of patients uh, where there is no uh, therapy currently. And then in trauma, again, it's a very, it's the number one cause of death between the ages one to 45 in the United States. Uh, hundreds of thousands of people uh, die of, of uh, trauma and trauma-related complications every year. And uh, we're looking to uh, improve outcomes and decrease uh, hospital stays and ICU time in that market as well. So just real quickly, uh, just to hammer some of these nails flush. In, in stroke, again, very large market. The greater majority of people that have a stroke have an ischemic stroke, so uh, 800,000 people a year in the U.S. Um, roughly 85% of them are ischemic strokes. Uh, that's the blockage of a vessel. About 10 to 12% are hemorrhagic strokes, which is the bursting of a vessel. And someone has a stroke in the U.S. every 40 seconds. This is a graphical representation of the data I alluded to earlier. You can see the, the change in the slope of the stroke patients that receive multi-stem compared to the, the patients who got placebo. Uh, it was, the, the cells were really well received and there were no adverse events. And so we're running the, the MASTERS II trial right now, 1.2 billion cells. We've shifted the time frame up for administration of the cells a little bit to 18 to 36 hours after the onset of stroke. And again, Helios will be reading out on their clinical data here in the not too distant future. And there's a lot of value drivers. We had independent analysis done of our MASTERS I study and we can see that there's a, a lot of, uh, of direct and indirect costs to be gained by having a therapy that could improve the quality of life and the long-term outcome for stroke patients. Acute respiratory distress syndrome, again, it's a, it's a, it's a very, there's no, no um, therapy for ARDS currently, and it has a mortality rate uh, of up to 50%. Um, and most of the patients uh, suffer from lifelong uh, experiences after they go through a case of ARDS. Here are some of the data, from, again, from our mustard trial. You can see uh, dramatic improvements in the, the days off of the ventilator and in mortality. Uh, and in the sickest patients, the bottom part of the graph, we see uh, the, the people who had the lowest uh, PO2 rates, uh, they, they had an even more uh, profound uh, uh, recovery in the multi-stem treated group. And then this is the early top line data from Helios, our partner in their ARD study. And again, they're, they're seeing the same sorts of benefits and trends. And we've done some pooled data between our study and their study, and we're very excited by what we saw. But we look to the future to, to uh, really uh, take the top off all the data in this study. And the same sorts of value drivers apply for the, for the ARDS patients treated with multi-stem. We uh, decrease long-term uh, problems associated with being on a ventilator, undergoing this uh, very uncomfortable 
uh, disease uh, and uh, really looking to improve quality of life in those patients. And then finally, very quickly, just on trauma, uh, we've done a lot of traumatic injury models and gotten grant funding, and it was amazing when we compared notes from the, uh, the stroke and the traumatic brain injury animals with some of the data we knew from the, the, um, the trauma uh, patients with some collaborators down at UT Houston. We decided to uh, put together a grant application, and we received funding from the Department of Defense to, uh, to look at a, a clinical trial to see if our cells would offset some of the same inflammatory complications seen in our other indications in this trauma trial. So that trial is enrolling. Um, progress and important milestones, I, I leave this up here for you. I'm out of time, but uh, we have an awful lot of milestones coming in the very near future, uh, next year, that we're very excited about, and we really think it's gonna move the, the needle for patients and hopefully for shareholders uh, uh, of our company. So thank you very much for your time, and um, have a good day. Stay safe.